same man. It's your boy. <laughs> no, real shit. It's they are pimping this bitch. Uh, scurry, skiggity, all that. And uh, this is another episode of Definition of Active. You know, uh, we you know we already be having real conversations before we even start the actual interview, just because it's always love with everybody. <sighs> Highlighting the real leaders. You know what I'm saying? I feel me. I'm faded with you. That's <laughs> <laughs> good, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey, we live here, here, man. This is Definition of Active. I'm here with my brother. Hey, I got you. Blood, blood is out, salute. You know what I'm saying? Black cat motherfucking built in the building. What is good, my guy? Yo, <laughs> thank you for having me. They love putting the black line. This is my, the, the Lin Kuei Sensei right here. Hey, coldest in the game. You know man. what I'm saying, man? You Straight like saying? that. Bro, what's up, man? Hey, bro. Hey, I'm a. Uh, He's I'm, decked out in it too, man. Full hey, sword. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, hey, peep the. You the know, Emperor's children. See the, see the fit, you know what I mean? Got Lashai on the shirt. Got Lady Venue on the shorts, you Come know on, what I mean? Man. We're going talk about crazy it. right now. We're gonna talk about it. So, yeah, hit me. What you how, want, what you want to you, know first? How you feeling, man? How you feeling? Let's 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 talk about let's talk about the album. Let's talk about like the drive. Let's talk about the anime. Start where you want to start, family. You good? Hey, man. Well, about to go on tour. We gonna get into all of it. Oh yeah, I'm with. The, okay, yeah. bet bet. Well, you as you know, the album's out now. Mm. So, the Emperor's Children, Flow of Swords. You know what I'm saying by your boy Black Cat Bill. Check that out ASAP. 15 tracks. Mm. I think it's like 41 minutes runtime. Um, and the album of art. The album is like a the floor of swords. I guess uh, uh, where I'll start. Uh, the slogan for the story is it's easy to relate to, but it's hard to explain. Mm. And so uh, we're gonna attempt to explain some stuff here today. But That's I, deep as fuck. you know what I mean. Appreciate you, G. Yeah. I feel like the floor of swords is like a metaphor for like it's kind of like my version of the yin yang mm. so and that's to say that there's a good side and a bad side right of like everything but within that bad side there's still some good in that and within the good that can happen for some there still may be something negative no facts and so like to me that's kind <laughs> of what the floral of swords yeah encompass you know it's like on the flower side the floral side you got Plants, they're you know they're beautiful. They um, can make medicines. Uh, they can smell, provide smell nourishment to, for the ecosystem and yeah. the environment to make it uh, flourish for us to enjoy. But then on the flip side, they can be poisonous. They can have thorns have or thorns have different. So you can get hurt by them still. And then on the, and then you got swords, right? Same thing. A sword is something that's made that can defend, protect the family, uh, maybe, you know, cut meat like a knife or whatever so you can eat or help you chop wood or something so or you can change. build. But then also a sword can be used to destroy, a blade can be used mm. to destroy, to murder, to mm. um, pillage a forest, to mm. cut a home down. So um, it's all about kind of whether it's a flower or a sword, whether it's masculine or or I guess the flower, whether it's feminine or masculine, or this or that, black and white, um, there's a plus and a minus. So it's mm -hmm. like kind of your job in your life to figure out how you align with that balance and what um, works for you. Some of us are a little more passive to a negative side, and we need to speak up more, we need to step our game up. Some of us are a little more passive to a positive side, and it allows us to be good, uh, teammates and um, listen and care about other people. Some of us are a little more aggressive to a negative side and it gets us in trouble because we're trying to bully people or we try to get our way through force all the time. Some of us are aggressive to a positive side because it allows us to stand up for others and to lead them and to have the confidence and courage to tell other people what they need to do so to mm -hmm. their benefit. So you know what I'm saying? Don't matter where you're at, you just gotta figure out, okay, where, where can I get better? And that's kind of like the overall gist of what the floral swords represent as far as uh, connecting, I think, to everyday humanity. And that led you to like creating this universe around that concept, you yeah. know what I mean? To like be able to like tell that, you know what I'm saying? To be able to, you said it's easy to relate to but hard to explain. So like, right, right. <laughs> maybe people can relate visually, you know what I mean? Or people might relate sonically and you, you, you are, and you're offering both to them. You know what I'm saying? Bruh. That's deep. 
We going crazy. So the Endless Vault Studio. Go ahead, shout it out. Endless Vault Studio. EVS, man. Y'all follow us on everything. Everything. EVS. Um, Endless Vault Studios. So the idea for the Endless Vault Studios is it's a studio that encompasses everything that kind of all studios would have. Um, we're, we got music, creation, production. We got uh, visual. Uh, we're working on visuals and creations and productions, writing, um, photography, uh, just anything that we can do to express ourselves. We want to find a way to incorporate and bring them back into the same fold, overlap these different abilities and skill sets, or if you will, these different methods, modes and mediums of expression and find kind of nuances and niche ways to create and cultivate um, you know, this imaginary landscape, uh, these different, uh, yeah, just expressive elements to connect to our fans. And so it's that, dope you guys have like minds inside that creative space as well. You know what I'm saying? Like bruh. all of you guys feel exactly how you feel. And you just have your own way of telling that Shouts story. Shouts to the team. It. Yeah, man. Team Artie Reeves, Taylor Adoria, Producers Unknown. Y'all follow, follow them. Follow the game. All right, man. So that, keep going, Bill. My bad. Oh, no, you good. But yeah, like it's just that the team has been... Um, we just been super focused on on finding uh, ways to kind of not go, I guess, in a direction that's already been paved. Not stay inside the box and be like, okay, of course we could just give you an album that tells you a story. Of course somebody could just write a comic book that you could just read. Uh, but what if they could write the comic and the movie and the soundtrack Scoring and and, the, and do everything and really just bring it to life? A one stop shop for that. Maybe too. even give you different pieces, right? Like maybe. An album comes out and it tells a part of the story, but then the next part of that story comes out in a book that you read, and it's not the book's not retelling what happened in the album; it's continuing Anyone after it. Mm -hmm. And then after that book comes out, there's an anime that goes, and the first season of that anime maybe tells some part of that story, and then after that anime comes out, there's a video game that tells another part of that story, and you, you see him go right through now? these different mediums. Mm. Mm. And then you get the whole story, but every way you get it, you're experiencing it and invested in an entirely different, ex you know. Do you feel like, because you told me it took you like, a, this, this is taking you like years to build this. This isn't like, yeah. so, these things don't come overnight, you know. That, hey. An idea was sparked and he had, just like he said, man, it's hard to explain. So we had to figure out a way, like, how can I make this shit make, because Bill's on some like, Stan Lee shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, can't hey. really put it in a box, you feel me? Like, you do drop out Kings, and right, like, right. that's not nothing that's small, that's crazy as fuck. Hey. Then you still have time to do your own art, you know what I mean? And then, and it's so much with your own art, it's busy, like it's not, I know time management is so important in your life, you know what I mean? 100%. And like, I think that that's super dope, but being able to like, and I only say, like, I don't say that lightly, I'm saying Stan Lee, you know what I mean? Man, this man yeah, had I universe, he had multi-universes in his You know head. what I'm saying? No, I appreciate that, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, so. I appreciate that. Those characters from. Me, Stan Lee and Ken and the fusion dance. That's crazy as <laughs> Can we get that out of shit? I got Stanley and Kendrick too. That would be crazy. Yo. That's fire. That'd be so fucking fire. It's like Kung Fu Kenny Lee. You would only understand it if you, if you, if you like watch this interview for real. But, yo, like, we gonna make that a thing. Please. What if we only, only us have, it, it don't matter. Obviously I'm going crazy because it's my dog. So like. <laughs> Do you think like you're able to articulate yourself in this way because uh, like you were you were an artist that was able to like graduate from like a university, graduate not even just graduate from university, but grad like you were able to go through college. So like, because a lot of people like, and I'm not gonna say specifics on your race, but like if you grow up in an area where it might not be like encouraged to be able to express yourself in those ways, you know. It had to be nurtured in some way. So like going to a college, let alone like a university, especially one of the biggest ones in the country. Right, the biggest. The biggest, you know what I mean? You get a lot of different perspectives. So my ASU game, Forks up. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so you know what it is, yeah. baby. School back And that's not small, man, you know what I'm saying? Study like, hard, y'all. Ask Party King. harder. Yeah, learn, learn. <laughs> if, if, for, if anything, if anything, educate yourself everywhere you can so you can have better ways to express yourself. If anything, you know what I mean? Like. The stuff you're passionate about, because it might not always be about money. You know, that might not even be the thing you end up getting money in. It might, you might circle back to that. You know what I'm saying? Because 
you are already killed it as an artist before you even got to be able to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You had to be able to master that to be able to incorporate it in the time management. I don't want to get away from the original question. No, but fine. like with college, you know, do you think that helped you be able to express yourself in these multiple ways? And salute to that, yo, Kings. Educate yourself. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, uh, that's a that's a really good question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that in that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I think. Uh, hmm. I think the easiest way to put how I feel about that is there's a Nas quote in the Street Dreams remix in verse 3 uh, where he says I tried to learn the game the only thing I found incredible everything I tried to learn see I already knew mm. and it's embedded in my heart now so I can sit back count a stack and play my part now mm. and it's in you know on you yeah, I think I've always been this type of person. Um, now, that doesn't mean that there wasn't some exterior forces to help nurture, you know, what helped me figure out how to make that beneficial and and uh, be uh, some utility in my life to be this imaginative and, and creative, if you will. But I don't think that, I, I didn't really take any classes in college uh, to to help me fundamentally get better at anything that has to do with being what an artist major? other than, so I'm a sociology, I got my bachelor's So you science. didn't even, that's crazy. So, so do you didn't even get to like take, necessarily take electives and shit for that because it doesn't go with your with your degree for real, huh? So you, I mean, you get like every, everything is gonna shit. have like, it's electives or like it's, um, you know, right, you know, your prereqs and your different, Sociology is basically just psychology, right? But it's like people in a group. It's mm -hmm. in the mass. Um, it's groupthink. So it's just kind of like the inversion of that. And of course, then they go hand in hand. And uh, being an artist, being somebody that's used to entertaining a bunch of people, that's used to um, maybe leading a bunch of people, if you will, they Moving look up the to you or they, yeah, exactly. You rock the crowd, the MC, you move the crowd, you're the master of the, mar the crowd. So, mm. uh, master of ceremonies. So it's Come like, on, man. you know, let's spit this hip hop, let's get <laughs> into it. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, nah, for real. I feel like college was one of those things where I just kind of learned more about the human mind mm. and how people like to function in groups specifically um, kind of different things about culture and race and gender as it pertains to groups in our modern society now but also how that um, how where we live and how we live now has been affected by history you know what I mean because you have to know where you're from mm. to know where you're going and on, I think a lot of people our age skip over history a lot you know there's a lot of boring stuff they teach you in school that's irrelevant that kind of makes you think history is irrelevant and it makes you think all of it's relevant you know but, yeah, you shouldn't but generalize it's it. actually it's so important and so like that's kind of that that taught me that and kind of through through getting through just learning different ways that I could implement my abilities to persuade um, I guess if you want to say manipulate, I don't want to sound like negative, but it's at the end of the day, it's, it is what it is. Um, I put out energy with an intent and I want people to respond to it in a certain way. And as somebody that's grown with understanding that power in myself, then my art has grown. So I think school was a good place for me to learn that about me. I already thought a lot of things that I knew or should I say, I already knew a bunch of things <laughs> that I thought, right? But I wasn't sure that I knew them. It was subconscious. I don't think so when I went to school, word, bro. even knowing you, like. I mean, it's not. I think it's. It, I think. It, I think it's more I mean, so. Like, it's, it's not, bro. I think it's more so like <laughs> spiritual alchemy, bro. You're growing in life, right? And, yeah. And, and when you're growing in life, like when you're when you're younger, you don't know how to express yourself in ways, and like life is about communication, bro. You know what I'm saying? I like to think like. My goal in life was always to be like the best Mac, cause that's a master. In, that's mastering the art of communication. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the way to move Talk in life. You know what I'm saying, fool? So like, 
it's spiritual alchemy. You, this is in you, not on you. Let's double circle back to Nas and like you know, for right, a circle, exactly. right? So like you just found out better ways to be able to express yourself to everybody. And if people follow that shit and listen to it, that's not you're not manipulating them. They just relating to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. manipulation is when you're doing something but like malicious. You know, you're doing it with malicious intent to get something out of it. You know what well, I mean? Well, I think sometimes you can. I think manipulation is like getting somebody to do something without them knowing that that's what you want them to do. Hmm. And it doesn't necessarily have to be bad, it's just the fact that your intent is not necessarily upfront. So maybe an example of this where it's good is something like um, telling a kid about Santa Claus. Okay. Because you're lying to them. But the intent there is to make them happy and find a the allure of the holiday and kind of get that mysticism. Something that would that make them energy. happy, have, be happy about yeah, it. Yeah, even though what you're doing is, for all intents and purposes, that's that's wrong and that's a, I mean, that's a manipulation. You're trying to, you're getting them to feel a type of way through deception, um, which, but, but you're not actually trying to, you know, like to like a little kid to hurt their feelings or something. Like Santa Claus isn't necessarily like universally looked at as a, uh, I don't agree with Santa Claus. Like, well, that's fair, though. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I'm just saying in general. You know well, what I mean? I can't, you know. So I think what I, like, I, I guess what I'm getting at with, can't give that man is what I'm saying is, do. like, as I learned about the human mind, yeah, yeah. I was like, I better understood just how to communicate with people and get things that I want out of them and out of life. Mm. Um, mm. Because that's what everybody should be doing. Uh, again, it's not, it sounds selfish, but it's all about your perception, right? Um, I don't try to get things out of people without having also intent to reciprocate the energy that they give me, without also having intent to be of benefit and of service to them in some way too. But if I come up to somebody, like if I'm going to ask a chick out, um, I'm not going to ask her out to, you know, do nothing. So you think that's a uniform manipulation? No, because I like you, you, no, because my 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 intent would be upfront, but yeah. I'm saying like I'm not even going to initiate in the prospect mm. uh, without already thinking of what's best for me first, and then after that is you or mm. whoever I'm dealing with. Now, if you're a good person, if you love yourself, then you project love. So when I get my shit, I'm a hundred percent, thousand percent, make sure they get what they need to get to. Because mm. like, we together on this. But at the same time, if I don't eat, I can't worry about if they're eating. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like that healthy degree of selfishness of like every situation I come into, I gotta make sure that I, every conversation I'm with, whether it's about business, any anything that I'm talking to that's, anything I'm talking about that's not strictly like a relationship with a friend or a family member where we're just, enjoying each other's uh, platonic energy and just yeah. then it's basically a business transaction because my time is being taken at the minimum it's my time and my energy and so mm. we can speak about dropout kings um how did that even come about um you know if you don't know about dropout kings uh my lead singer adam was just in another band and hit me up randomly one day because he saw the AZ Underdog Cypher, which me and Preem uh, partook in and spit some raps back when we first met back in the day. Well, so, that shit said like uh, 80,000. That led to the, uh, yeah, that is crazy with like absolutely zero promotions and shit. Wow. <laughs> that, uh, that, that led to Adam finding me and asking me to be, um, to do a cover of a Linkin Park song with him. Mm. I did it. We had a good time hanging out, kind of just hit it off, and we're like, "Yo, you want to, um, you know, continue to make music together?" And our friendship just kept growing. Uh, and yeah, so we just decided, 
let's uh, try to do something new and just make a band out of it. So that was a that's always that was a outlet I didn't expect to have as a artist uh, that kind of just came about for me. Especially coming from hip hop and being like the best like fucking rapper, and then you know doing rap doing trap metal now. You know what I mean? Like which is still now you're the best rapper in trap and like the whole genre of that music and shit, which is even doper. So hey, I appreciate you so, on that, and I fine. definitely that's fine, uh, fine. best rapper in metal. Heard us no cap on the trap with my fellows. It, Ski mask and tell me all right, about me. Hold on. Hey, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> man, like now you're like a you're like guy, you're already an Arizona time. legend. Off of you, like off of the band, bro, yeah, and to be able to showcase that, like I'm about to be legendary as an artist, you know, too, because like this is just completely different than what you're used to when I'm rapping inside of, you know, DOK, like which they're about to go back on tour, by the way. These niggas are on tour more than at home. Yeah, we're going back on tour, so pull up and see us. Um, yeah, it's funny when it comes to the time thing, because for instance, uh, Floral Swords, so like when I talk about being selfish, uh, Floral Swords is my thing. And personally, it's something that matters the most to me, more than pretty much anything else that I've ever worked on, because it's, it's you. my own conception and my own, um, yeah, it's just, it's what I want to do. Um, it's what I was planning on doing before I ever was in the band. So there's always a, a part of me that mostly desires to be working on on, a, on that. But on the flip side of things, you know, the band is one of those things where, like I said, it wasn't something I ever expected or planned to be a part of. But sometimes opportunities uh, fall in your lap, if you will. Um, of course, I was rapping and working to do stuff to be noticed um, yeah. by whoever that was that was gonna provide me with the opportunity and this one happened to be from Adam. And I just took advantage of it, but I think- um, Shout out to Adam. Yeah, shouts to Adam. Mm -hmm. Shouts to Adam Rainey, shouts <laughs> to the man. Shout out you know to Adam. Shouts yeah. to my boy, yeah, the, the legendary White Wolf. Uh, but you seeing y'all play, you know, uh, play Pokemon and all kinds of shit and just- Yeah, man, Adam really is, enjoy a, life is a nerd shit. too. I mean, everybody I know is kind of a nerd. I hang out with a lot of nerds. And, like the band stuff is so simple to me that I don't really, um, it's just kind of more like freestyling. The floor sword stuff takes so much more work because it's literally creating a universe. It's not, it's mm. like writing a song is almost a insignificant task in comparison. It's like the most well-written song I ever had isn't gonna compare to the book I think that I'm gonna put out. Uh, mm -hmm. by the end of this year when it comes to just, uh, I mean, it's a whole different format, but there's so many more words I can use. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't there's even so got a rhyme, too. More things I can express. Yeah. So it's just it's like nice. creating this, making these uh, characters and keep making having them come to life. Uh, for instance, the shy is a ex-military captain. She was the leader of the Fankiri, who are the royal guard for the King of Panthera. And she retired. I love Panthera, because of... <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. You know what it is. If y'all understand why I love it, you know, look the word up, educate yourself. You know Get what with us. Uh, you know what's good, man. You know we know on that saying? big cat game. He, uh, go and, ahead, he knows I love that. I love that planet. And the shy is a, um, she's a Rikasi, so she is a elemental seer. Um, there's also the Vaz. Uh, Rikasi is R A I K O S I. And Vaz is V A S Z. Is a name. Thank you. It's the name of the species of Ifangians who are the elemental benders, or um, as I call them, the seers. Um, but the seers. And, uh, but we just call them seers. But anyway, they, uh, within the six fundamental elements on Ifangi, which are ice, or it's actually cold, liquid, heat, electricity, earth, and gas. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Um, Netflix needs to get behind this. Uh, hey, it's gonna get crazy, man. You know and then we, but she bends fire, earth, and, and air. Um, 
which is, uh, you know, kind of like how an avatar, it's only the avatar could bend multiple ones. Um, on Ifanji, everyone bends elements. Everybody does that shit. Uh, if they're a seer. And the other half of the Ifanjians, the Vazians, who probably outnumber the seers, uh, they are shapeshifters, so they gain attributes that have to do with the wildlife that surrounds mm. where they were born and in the genetics of their parents. So they may be somebody that... Um, Do you hear how deep he's talking about this can. shit? I thought you just see it. <laughs> I have a big love of like nature, so that's kind of where those elements came from. And, and you know, the floral swords, right? It's, it, the other part of the floral swords is it's kind of like a battle between nature and technology. Mm. Um, the sword, something crafted to do this or that the flower is something that just grows and it is what it is but also can do this or that and so uh kind of like the ayani fanji um it's one of those planets where you kind of get this uh combination concept of like a techno organic world like a world where I don't wanna... they use disco the king? yeah lord these the right. disco king All right, so uh yeah where he uh is from hey, it's gonna be legendary you, hey, it's gonna be so legendary one day. Like, <laughs> yo y'all remember when bill like broke down the whole shit <laughs> like, like like this is, this is gonna this is gonna get crazy i've seen crazy ass comics like i'm really trying to tell people right now because i think there's a lot of between marvel dc a lot of other mainstream things I've seen coming out recently, from especially from America, I think a lot of animes are, are better articulated and is expressive of the ideas that they're trying to come or get across. I but like the Invincible universe too. Invincible is great. That's Image Comics, Spawn, mm, yeah. and so shouts to Tom They said that they've been doing multiverse Legendary comics. Legendary creator, yeah. Jar, Spider-Man created yeah. Venom, created yeah. Spawn. Definitely big Legendary. inspiration of mine. Nah, um, they literally said that they, they've been doing multiverses great. 10 years before uh, DC and Marvel started doing that shit. Well, <sighs> they banged that just like three days ago online, bro, IGN. That's interesting. I'd have to I, <laughs> I'd have to do some research, but they been, I was like, but what I will say is that image is definitely like like they make stuff for their fans. Mm. They don't they're not they don't go out of their way to try to appease like wokeness or try to appease these people that don't even buy comic books or care about the stories anyway. They just do what they want to do and if you rock with it you can check more of it out, and if you don't, um, you can move on with your life. And I like that it they have that fire. approach because that's how art should be made. You just yeah, shouldn't make no art rules to, that to try to impress someone or try to like Control. sound like someone else or, or do, manipulate. People. Do your own thing, yeah, or uh, manipulate people. Um, <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, and you want to inspire and motivate people. And I think that's definitely like the key of the expression, but <laughs> sometimes there's- Girls don't manipulate people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> she, she don't manipulate. Man, the rhetoric. See, this is what I didn't oh want to say <laughs> because it's not, <laughs> you can- <laughs> No, this one's fire. <laughs> yeah. You can, yeah, just yeah. be wise and be, you know, have everyone's best interests at mind. Um, you know, hopefully in a genuine way that's not just revolved around your personal uh, interest or self. But anyway, you know, get what you got to get out of the world. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Ooh, get what you got to get out of the world is a good one. And, but don't, don't, it's like gambling, you know, you can't get too much. You have to, mm -hmm. see, discipline, writing, rapping, skills take discipline. And, uh, you know, I've learned a lot about that while creating this story, how... When I first started writing it, I thought, oh, like, I just want to make a comic book. I just want to create, like, my own Mortal Kombat or Star Wars. And I'll just come up with a bunch of characters overnight and kind of just wing a story and it'll be dope. And as I'm making it, um, you know, so many different questions would arise as we're over here at the Endless Vault Studio thinking about, well, um, you know, how does this stuff all play out um in a in a timely manner and like the the order of the events like what characters are where and and um 
what are their personalities are like and how do we express them in the different environments and what are the environments like and there's just so many different things that you don't necessarily think about you you, you kind of assume maybe that they'll just come to you instantaneously and then as you start to create uh you oh, naturally come across these interesting obstacles. Like you'd be on tsunami and shit. I'm just like, <laughs> hey, you know, shit. I'm like, I don't swim. I'm like, hey, man. I see it vividly. So like that shit's so fire. So like the Emperor's Children. Like you look at the track list. Did hmm. did making this album? Because I know how you are with Sully too, bro. I understand it. Like there's a lot in the chamber. You know what I'm saying? A lot in the vault. So be able to pick the track list. Was it all like new, or were some songs like you've had for a while, or like? Well, you know, you know my favorite songs on the project. Do you have favorites? You know what I mean. Like, even like the names of your songs are just different than other. Like, you see his name. Hey. You see, you see. You know what I'm saying. Like, you see some tracklists. The song tracklists be like fuck niggas. <laughs> yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Like throw it gotta, back. Gotta get it back. Make it rain. Like from the trap. Drop it low. I'm not. <laughs> like, up top. You know what I'm saying. Like no, nah, like he got know, he got and tentacles. Oh, so in tentacles. Cyclops? So in tentacles. And it's how you spell Cyclops. I said Cyclops, so like. Oh, because. Come so, on, man. go ahead, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, bro. I'm trying. I don't be here just talking about people's projects and shit. I didn't listen to it or none of that weird <laughs> shit. Like, in tentacles. Know where y'all at, man? Stage is way too active. Excuse me. In tentacles. <laughs> Straight up. Now that's crazy. That's in tentacles crazy. are inspired by locks. So we have locks um, <laughs> and tentacles. Okay, so if you know about Star Wars. You see it and call them dreads too, by the way. That's a whole other thing. Go ahead, Bill. There are some species that, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't do that. There's some species in Star Wars that have um, different, uh, I guess, head like types. growths yeah yeah styles um so there's like i forgot the names of all of them but my point being um uh, there was a couple ones that kind of had uh the tentacle look some tentacle type of jaunt so i thought that, I, I think that's interesting and we can work with that and kind of take that to another step yeah. and um the and tentacles in my story uh for the characters that are Ifangian and elsewhere um it's kind of a term that expands beyond the Ifangian culture but it is a Kind of Ifanjian coin thing, but they were inspired by locks. They were inspired by locks, you know, and the fact that in a lot of um, native cultures, indigenous cultures of all kinds, long hair is seen as like having antennas. It increases um, a person's ability to perceive their environment through their senses mm. um, and gives them almost like a sixth sense to. Uh, kind of, you know, take in the things that are around them and be aware and take advantage of what they need to do to survive and not just that, but thrive. And I think it's a perfect example in uh, slavery um, in our history through the genocide of the uh, native peoples and the different indigenous peoples that lived here, as well as the peoples that came from the transatlantic slave trade, mm. um, that they were cutting people's hair. Read a book. They were scalping them. They would take their hair because not only was it a signifier in their culture, especially of young men, they knew it was of power. their strength. Of it's their, just our ancestors, right. don't worry. Man, it's good. <laughs> of their, they hear us talking, bro. They're proud of us. They turn to their strength, of their power, of their yeah. energy right there. What is now? Nah, you know right. what I'm saying? We ain't even talking. We just channeling them. Nah, right for now. real though. So it's like the antanicals to me in my story. The Afangians are alien. Um, they are, you know, not human technically. They have their whole own thing. They're humanoid creatures. They're like more elfish. I like to think of them kind of like cool, these cool space like, elves. Like dark elves? Like black, like space elves that are black people too. Yeah, that's hard. That's, um, that's crazy. That are like black la and Latin that's people crazy. basically. Mama. And and so Mama's like- gonna try to buy the lights, Yeah, that's how I'm selling it to them so they can butcher my stuff. So the antanicals, yeah, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. They very much so bring that perception and that sensory to another level and the characters that have those they're not just like um these weird things that are growing off just their head for no reason but um would you ever cut they represent locks? something and then uh i have thought about it so many times and i i don't know if i could i think eventually one day i will but i am not putting a date on it and i'm not in a rush to get there mm. um like on some new energy i wouldn't be i don't I, like i'm 30 i'm in my 30s you know what i'm saying I think, like, by the time I'm 50 and they're, like, past my knees, 
I can see me being like, okay, maybe I'm just going to, you know, hit the Dr. Sabi and just be bald out here and just do my thing and be cool. But I, I might not feel like that either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I might want to keep them forever and just leave them and not even trim them. Um, Cause that's something that I really love about my locks uh, that yeah, they're just form. free form. And, um, you know, I, I definitely learned about how to take care of them a bit after I started doing them. Mm. Um, but they've turned out pretty nice. And, uh, Different kinds I of appreciate uh, having locks them. on, on locks in the, in the couch, motherfucker. You know, I woke locks up locks. like this. I woke up like this. Remember how many styles have y'all seen in this chair? You know what I'm saying? And then Cyclops. I love Tell them how you spell it. Tell them how you spell it. P S Y C L O P S. Mm. And that's basically psychic and cyclops mm -hmm. combined. And that is to say that the uh, Levidians, a another race that is not connected to the Afongians, or, I mean, is connected to them, but they're separate. They're their own people um, living elsewhere in the galaxy. They are Cyclops people. They are a race of Cyclopses. And they don't always necessarily take the form of Cyclopses because their heads um, and their bodies uh, can have been in these primordial forms that represent more of the natural state of kind of elemental composition mm. uh, in the galaxy or universe. But so when they, they take they their most humanoid forms, they're basically like Cyclopses. And so, are they psychic? Yeah, and they're all psychics as well. So, What power would you have? Would you be a psychic? I think I would, teleporting would be fire. Mm. Um, being a psychic would be super great. I guess if you had like all the psychic powers too, that would be pretty OP because like you have like telepathy on one hand where... You know, I could read thoughts, I could project my thoughts into others' heads, possibly I could like maybe read people's dreams and stuff. But then you got like telekinesis where it's like, that's like being able to move, manipulate move matter it. and move it in the physical world. Um, then I could be like a true telepath where I could read people's emotions as if they were, you know, literally words. Like I could see their aura and understand exactly how they're feeling. Um, without them even knowing that. That'd be a cool ass power. I know that. Um, so you could, there's a lot of different things about being a psychic that, you know, possibly you could have foresight, right? Um, or see into the past and stuff. Uh, there's, a, you know, psychic is an is a, a interesting umbrella. So that's why I was like, yeah, I think that's the, the uh, a cool basis for the powers of the Levidians. And that's, um, that song was put on the Inverse Children album because it alludes to a interesting actually connection between the Levidians and the uh, Fongians and uh, we'll be elaborated on in the story so definitely make sure you uh, tune in again in this vault studios y'all got to tap in yes. I got my my uh, brother or sister story if you will um, Indigo Shadow which is being written and produced by producers Ooh. unknown one of my other co-creators uh, of the Endless Vault Studios, and that happens How on Earth. How am I gonna interview in the producers unknown, man? A Real mask? Cool. No, he's cool. He'll Blur his in. face? He'll probably just wear sunglasses or something. That's hard. He cool though, he's with the shit. You gotta blur my, my Jesus He's face. a really smart dude, man. So he's he's got his thought, and he's telling he's the amazing. side of the Earthlings. Mm. So he's handling Earth, I'm handling Ifanji, two totally different parts of the galaxy but in the same galaxy, in the same universe. And so eventually you can expect uh, the characters from both of our stories, their paths to cross and the stories to intertwine. So we're really excited about that too. But that's- Crossovers already at the beginning? You know, we're just plotting. I'm giving y'all some crazy game right now. So I probably won't be repeating this a lot. So just remember- Talk about war. I said it here first. War. So I have a song, um, the album, track six. It's called Weed, Anime, and Ramen. And, uh, War was one of those songs that um, I really wanted to go back to the hip hop kind of basics with. I didn't want to scream on it. I didn't want to have a super specific subject matter about anything in particular that was like polarizing. I just wanted to rap and... Um, Obviously, weed, anime, and ramen are three things that I enjoy and kind of uh, tap into three different aspects of the culture that I'm indulging in. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good like so explanation of like, this is the shit that I'll be like. It was kind of one of those songs I wanted you to play and be able to think about. It could play 
in the background maybe of your favorite anime if you uh, weren't ready to think about it being played uh, for Floor of Swords because you aren't as familiar yet but I also thought um, it w I wanted it to be one of those songs that kind of felt like uh, a song that might come out in the 90s or early 2000s by like you know like a Lupe or or a Nas or somebody who just could get on the beat and just ride it and, and spit something, maybe throw a little harmony on the uh, hook. What, yeah. what part does, uh, does an artist like Lupe play in your life? Well, Lupe is my favorite rapper all time. So you already know, I know you know that. <laughs> uh, Lupe Fiasco definitely has. He expresses himself in a lot of different ways too. Man, yeah, literally, man. literally, Yasuke is literally a black funny samurai. because he's in a band that he has called Japanese Cartoon. I did not know that shit. And uh, yeah, they have a song the on his album, The Cool, or at least it's inspired by uh, them called uh, Hello Darkness, uh, Hello Sunshine. And I got a weird anime and it's Robin an amazing question too after that too, but no, I'm not going to forget it, go ahead. You're, okay, bet, but yeah, yeah Lupe is, um, He's just a terrific MC, and I think he embodies a lot of different aspects of um, kind of being like a a good artist and a good man as far as like he stands on the shit that he says, but he, you know, is willing to uh, continue to try learning stuff and know he's not perfect. He, might, he writes a lot of dope music that I think actually, uh, you know, is enlightening, is informing. Um, one doesn't the just greater, make you one of the storytellers. bounce or feel a flow, but yeah, like it teaches you something. And and his words are, I mean, his his poetic genius is just phenomenal. He's one of the best wordsmiths ever on the planet. You can uh, teach a class from the cool. And yeah, dead ass. Not for real. The like, cool, that's the like, cool, at that's, least a semester. Or something. That's an insane. That's my favorite. I think that's one of the. I think that's top five concept albums cool ever great. written in any So genre. many perspectives in the cool, bro. Like to be able to, and like the dialogue. So uh, yeah, we won't even. But Lupe saved my life. Uh, Lupe saved my life. You know what I'm saying? When That's I was, hard, bro. When I was in high school, him and Tupac. Um, my senior year, I had a a episode where I was um, thinking about doing something that would have been permanent and not good. So, um, you know, listening to their words and their music at that time was something that helped me uh, get the strength and find the perception. The the, the angle of uh, looking at my life to wanting to continue on with it and improve and, and feel like I could do better and things could be better than they than they felt like they were at the time. So um, like that's was, the power of music, like man. That inspired fear? me to want to be like honest. it was fear? Like, uh, I think it was scared. What do you think it was? A combination of things? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I don't even. I'm not gonna. I won't go too deep on it, on it, on it in here because no, it's like I don't even mind talking about it. But I just, you know, You're everybody good, don't need to be. You're straight. But that it. But but what I will say is like I think that um, everybody, especially when you're a teenager, of course, that's probably when you're most susceptible to just being emotionally erratic and possibly uh, spontaneously uh, ready to combust, if you will, um, because things feel overwhelming, even though a lot of things that you deal with at that time are not very significant, probably, probably possibly. But shit in your world is the biggest know. things in the world when you're that age. But exactly, when you're going yeah. through it, you can't see it like that. And so um, that's all it was. I think I just, you know, was going through some stuff that uh, in my head was bigger than it was. And, um, you know, I just needed to have a outlet which allowed me to express my frustrations and desires and things as well as um, help provide me with some advice because I really wasn't getting it from anyone or anything that was around me at that time. Uh, so um, it was just kind of tough to deal with. It felt like going through a lot of stuff um, by myself. But that being said, yeah, Lupe, Tupac. You know, Lupe's music just also showed me, too, that it's okay to be an intellectual, um, you know, just kind of black man. I, I never had ever seen anything like or heard anything like Lupe. Uh, the closest black, I would I say like I heard to Lupe was Nas I was gonna bring up when I black first heard too. Nas. Oh, and I didn't see, but I didn't, 
Mm -hmm. I wasn't actually, see, I got, I got hip to Black Thought so late, and Black Thought is my second favorite rapper all time now. Probably a fingernail beneath Lupe, but Black Thought is literally, I don't think I, I, he can spit anything whack. Like, I don't think it's literally even possible if are, he tried to. Are Lupe to. and Black Thought both from Chicago? No, Black Illinois Thought's from, from Philly. From Philly? Philly. And, uh... But just like the power of their music just showed me like, yeah, that should change his life. So now when I do stuff in the band, like Dropout Kings, so like Riot Music, right? Riot Music and Glitch Gang are two albums. Okay, here's an example of manipulation. Give you guys. <laughs> he came right back to it. Fire. I never, an elephant never forgets. Fire. Fire. And a panther never stops stalking. Mm, let me um, not forget about the war question too, because you're right about the elephants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like, once it's brought up the praise there. <laughs> It's like, stocking. <laughs> They're like, what is that a quote? Who made that up? Yeah, that was me. You don't need to use it again. Um, yeah, you don't need to use it again. There's... <laughs> That's crazy. There's just an element to the creative process that has to do with literal just self-awareness and confidence mm -hmm. like you can't make anything without being able to look in the mirror to some degree and be like this is who i am and this is what i'm going through and this is where i want to be and this is where i've been mm -hmm. and so like hearing that music with new ears and stuff just gave me the idea that like okay maybe you know even though i'm black and i think blackness means this and even though i'm a, a, a man and i think being a man just means acting like this um, even though I think this or that, uh, it, it allowed me to open my perception of what those things mean, uh, but in a way that was healthy and beneficial for myself, like not necessarily pressuring me or encouraging me to reconsider or change myself in a way that was not genuine, but kind of showing me that like, yo, Lupe is just as good a rapper as any other rapper if not better. But yeah. also, Lupe is like a nerd dude. Like he has glasses, he skateboards, he raps about robots and superheroes. And nobody was talking about that stuff when, when Lupe came out doing it, at least not that I was listening to. You might, I mean, you'll get, rappers of course are amazing linguists, so you're gonna hear a bar here and there and stuff. But he would but have not like that's whole concepts like that's and whole the, yeah, songs no, about facts, stuff and it'd facts. just be like, damn, this is uh, amazing. And it just made me be like, okay, maybe I can, Instead of waiting to hear somebody make the type of raps I want to hear, maybe I can just be my own favorite rapper. I can start rapping and get good enough to rap raps that maybe I, I can, think this I is the type of raps that I be think my are the own best. Favorite rapper. That's crazy. You know what I mean? And then that and then from that idea it just spurred me on to start doing comics, writing this novel, and creating the whole floor swords idea. Because I just I felt the same way about a lot of comic books and stuff. I got sick of looking at Batman over and over again and Superman and Spider-Man and all those guys and even though I'm a big Marvel fan, I'm a big DC fan, just the way they keep rebooting stuff, the way they um you know, swap characters out and change yeah, their origins they, and they do, need some young people in the mob things. Yeah, I don't like they all that stuff. That shit. So I was like, "No, nah, I'm I'm a I you know what? I don't need to wait for them to get it right. I can write my own story. I can write a better story as a matter of fact. Then these dudes that work at Marvel and Disney, why not? Why who's who says that they are the best story from writers. the turf too from Arizona from the turf. Like I said, we who people was the best rappers before, but now it's me. So that's how I'm just like <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Like I'm yeah, man, it just helped me find that confidence in myself and grow through the art to become not just a better artist, but a better person. And uh it's been nice, man. I've had such a pleasure being able to just have something to work on, waking up every day and, and be busy, you know, know that I have stuff to dedicate my time to. I'm never bored uh, because every second of the day I could be working on my book. I could be working on the music. I could be. There's always another aspect to the story that needs development, that needs to go to the next level, um, that needs to turn to the next page. And so it's just provided me this awesome uh, kind of infinite purpose to continue to create and to keep my desires fresh, because if I... I'm writing a song and then I'm kind of like, I don't feel like rapping right now. I don't feel like singing. Then 
I can shift my focus to drawing and trying to focus on character concepts and outfits and different things and how their powers look and, and planets and landscapes and stuff like that. When I'm just like, dang, I'm not in the mood to draw right now. I don't know. Da, 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 but I still also don't want to make music. Then I can switch my focus to my book and be like, cool, I got to write my novel. I got to write these comics. We need dialogue. We need um, time management, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, that, so that's a lot. Is, it, yeah, creating a universe, it takes all this you, time. You got it, though. You got it, though. I'm oh, like, I'm having a blast, man. I'm off to the races. Like, anybody that's been, you know, sleeping on me or overlooking me, like, they, uh, that was they lost. So I'm, I'm blasting off right now. So, check this. So, like, <laughs> And I can already tell, like, I'm pretty sure all you guys can tell when the interview is, like, very transparent, but, like, that's why I like songs like The Other Side of Fear, you know what I mean? Like, Yo, thank you. That showcase, that's a that, special song. That showcases transparency in a whole different way. Like, I know you have the whole concept, but you're also still showing a lot of, like, personal growth and, and like, sounds like that and shit, too. Like, yeah, check man. these songs out, too, man. You already know you got to check these tracks out, you know, shouts to, yeah, The Other Side of Fear is just Niggas exactly a song and, about and what it's about. project. Go ahead, my bad. <laughs> 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 nah, for real. Niggas ain't gonna see your project. It's a, uh, it's exactly what the title says. It's just about a song. It's a song about the other side of fear. In this case, it's a little more of like a romantic song. So yeah. it may um, allude to just taking a risk on um, creating a, a bond that's out of love. Because I think in general, you need to take risks and challenge your fears, period, in life. Um, but I find in this generation, I think one of the major things that people fear, ironically, is like people like have a weird fear of like love. Like a lot of people are very uncomfortable giving love and they're very uncomfortable receiving it right now. Mm. Um, cause we live in this kind of pseudo technological, you know, like people dick ride, but it's not genuine. They just want something from you or people are just haters cause they don't agree with you, so they go out of their way to be extra rude and stuff. And like, you just get all these extremes, which makes people, everybody feel a little more jaded and more guarded and be like, well, I don't want to put my true self on display. I don't want to uh, love somebody, or I don't even want to feel good when someone compliments me because I don't think they're really complimenting me to make me feel good. I think they want me to feel good so they can get something out of me. You know what I mean? And then when you take that further into trying to have a relationship, trying to start a family, obviously, you can't do that with just anybody. And you definitely aren't going to be able to build that bond with someone when everyone is moving so fast, when everybody's so Yeah, I don't, I don't, think, you, I don't think you sound jaded or anything like that. I just think you're, you're, you're growing while you're finding yourself and you kind of know what you want. Well, I mean, like not me personally right now, but I'm just saying like humans in general, like mm. we get jaded as we go through these experiences and then we don't want to open up to mm. people. And then we just, all the men are just like, cool. I'm just treating every woman I meet from now on as a hoe. All the women are just like, cool. I'm treating every man that I meet from now on as like a bank account or um, whatever. So it's just like, we're not, um, but then at the same time on the inside, everybody wants to actually have someone adore them and love them and be with them, but they cannot allow themselves to be in that space mm -hmm. because they won't give that, they won't reciprocate that when it's shown to them. And if it's shown to them, they can't believe that is true because they think someone's gonna lie to them or treat to them or whatever. So they'll just push them away instead. And so um, right now I think, yeah, people need to kind of, I wanted to express that through that song. We need to overcome our fear of a, of a lot of things, but especially our fear of love and compassion and uh, softness. Like you gotta, you can't be a good father, a good mother, a good brother, a good sister a good son, a good daughter, um, a good husband, a good wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, just a good friend in general. To anybody, if you're too afraid to love them and allow them to love you, and I mean that like the most sincere way possible, not just like texting people and sometimes, or just like hanging out with them and smoking weed and chilling and talking on the phone. I mean like really being there for people We're when they go and do it. I mean, when they, yeah, when they really go through it, you know, yeah. like love them when, like you said, it, it's not, and it, and it doesn't mean like stuff is, doesn't have to always be, there can be conditions because like we're humans and like sometimes we, you need to set your own boundaries too, but to be willing to truly work with someone and know that they're not perfect. So there's going to be times when they do things in their life, which are going to upset you, which aren't going to align with what you want to do, but to be open and courageous and fluid enough to be like, okay this is what I want and need from you. 
what do you want and need from me and let's recalibrate and get back on the same page because we're here to support each other we're not here to like exacerbate our past traumas or you know what I'm saying and I don't think a lot of people have that intent but I just think when they go through it it's easy to get in that mindset of like oh the last person cheated on me yeah, well now my next relationship I'm carrying that. the energy yeah. that they hurt me with into that you so give, you gotta give yourself time you gotta clean that out shit. yeah you gotta heal yeah. and allow yourself you to chill and then come back don't just go out there and sleep with everybody nah, then try to try shit. to try to fuck it away don't just think you can just smoke and drink it away don't just think you could party it away or or just travel somewhere and move and it's just gonna disappear you need to sit and meditate and really analyze your life and think about like okay why did this happen why do I feel like this and come to an objective understanding of how you got there so you can learn and then let it go you know what i mean that's don't cool. be mad at your exes either because they're just humans like unless they really and, try that, to, and, and honestly that should be a reflection of you you can't right. be, you can't be mad at nothing in your past because at that time it was exactly what you wanted you so know what like, i mean just learn from it so you just learn I mean? from it and, and appreciate and hope and wish the best you know for them uh even if you're you you know you don't see them anymore you guys aren't talking anymore you know uh so that's kind of like what that song's about like and then when you're with someone yeah like really love them you know don't be afraid when you're actually with somebody like i think that happens too sometimes like you you, you get what you want and then you're you're you kind of think about everything else besides just it you know you think being about present, losing it or you think show. about like controlling it mm -hmm. or it's there Control just let it so be it what it is if it's if it's there for you it won't go mm. you know or it will come back whatever the case but like just be loved to that thing don't try to make it so it's like oh i'm only gonna love you if you do this just love the thing love the person and let them if they make a mistake or they do something you decide how to react to that but don't don't be the problem. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people kind of have that in their head. Like, why wait for someone else to break my heart when I can be the heartbreaker? And that's yeah, that sounds fun when you're young, but like it ends in misery. I can guarantee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you know so what I'm saying? unless you're like an evil villain ass nigga, but unless you like that, <laughs> unless you like that, some and people do love the drama and they just they that's where they want to live. Me, I'm on a frequency. You know, a little bit different than that. So yeah, I, I want to be love. around love and yeah, positive love. and progression. So I'm trying to be around people that inspire me, who I can inspire in turn, and we can just keep pushing each other higher. Um, but yeah, you know, shouts to the other side of fear, man. We yeah, gotta... it's, it's inspiring. Like like he said before, don't smoke it away. But I don't want to like I don't want to uh, discourage smoking. And this is my last. Question. No smoke, but don't yeah. think you can smoke problems away. You can't. And it, but that's, that's what I'm and this saying. Song, this song ain't a problem. You're a problem. This song ain't a problem. You know what I'm don't saying? Don't try like, to escape your your issues through vices. Nah, you know it, you won't, have, it won't. It won't end the, the way. The only want. way to beat the fear in the vice is to face it head on. To face look in the mirror and be like, "This is a problem. Admit it. Address it. Figure out what you need to do to." Fix it and then commit to that act consistently. You know what I'm saying? Discipline. But people just think, oh, I'm hurt. Like, I'll just be numb from pills. Okay? Like, that's not... That's going to just prolong this. The problem's still You're not going to find a new lover. You're not going to get a new better job. You're not going to move to your dream home t doing... Escaping things. That's not... That's what's not going to happen. You're just going to escape opportunity, too. Because that's what a lot of these challenges are. They're don't, opportunities don't to grow. Right. Don't don't escape. Right. Like what? Trick yourself out your you own You running position. away from your Trick own growth. Trick yourself out your position in the position that you could have. You running life. from your own growth. Right. So just stand on your two. Be about what you about. You know, hey, these are my standards. This is what I'm on. This is what I've been through. And this is me. And people can get with it or they can get lost. You know what I'm saying? Don't You don't got to rub it in on. But don't ever chase nobody. Don't chase nothing. Just know that like when stuff comes to you. And presents a challenge, that's just an opportunity in disguise. Sometimes the opportunities come to you just straight up as opportunities. Like Adam just pulling up and being like, hey, you want to be in Dropout Kings? And I, or you want to create a band with me? I'm like, sure. And then we did it. Sometimes an opportunity comes because someone's beefing with you. And then you squash the beef. And now that person you are beefing with is one of your new best friends. And they getting you new money. And you got a new nigga that you could ride with who you also know is just as tough as you because they was mad enough to beef with you about something. You know what I'm saying? If you can perceive it like that, like they're a reflection of you. If, if you're man enough to go to war with them and they're man enough to go to war with you, 
there's some part, there's something about both of y'all that has a level of like, there could be a bond there. If you can figure out a resolution to whatever is causing you to want to take it to that level of, you know, violence or aggression towards each other. That brings me back to war, bro. See, this is like, maybe I'm just like manipulating this interview, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, so for my final question, what's your favorite weed, your favorite anime, and the favorite toppings to put inside of ramen? Oh, you see man. how I did that? I'm that nigga. Do you see that shit? That, that was, was on the cold. spot, man. That was on the spot. Go ahead, that bro. That was cold. I got you, nigga. Come that on, bro. And I really want to know. Okay. I know the middle question is hard as fuck, but the first one and the last uh, one, my I'm, I'm favorite dead ass weed, curious. my favorite anime. I mean, all of these are pretty hard. I think. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite weed I don't even know if I have a favorite weed like damn do you like sativas or indica indica I like more though cause mm. I like the like I like the hand <laughs> I don't know what that <laughs> that's what it is uh, have you seen it here first <laughs> I like you know the, I, mean? I like, the, like you feel me hey let me a real nigga yeah. this like man you feel me <laughs> yeah that's what I want man I need the weed that you know she had that <laughs> Uh, Hell yeah, but uh shit, <laughs> shit. um <laughs> any weed any I, I i'll say my favorite weed if i could think of like a specific name of one off the top right now like i'd be thinking of like old ass nigga weeds like shit that people smoke back in the day like what's your favorite weed like sour, sour diesel. diesel yeah <laughs> like some shit like that like it gets only that is my favorite that is my favorite weed <laughs> Ever. It's crazy like, that you, that's is. what you Fam, I'll just be like, like Kush. That's the first uh, strong weed I ever smoked was diesel. Is it Kush? Like, is is it not mid? Then I fuck with is it. it. I, like, is it above mid? It like, roll be. it up then. I don't give a shit. We don't smoke Middle Earth. I really love all my fellow pilots out there, but I'm not going to lie. Y'all be cracking me up when we be smoking and y'all got to be like, hey, yo, man, the trip to trying to trim the lights and like, you know, it's got the different... Um, <laughs> this is actually 37% that, THC. That's crazy, And it's bro. got the uh, special key <laughs> wrapper, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the... <laughs> right, I, look, bro, look. <laughs> you said it's not mids. We are good. You said it's not that's mids? That's all I need it's to know. It's not mini box? Huh? It's, it's, I'm you know? good. I don't even care now. Like, yeah, I like indica more than sativa if I got a pick. But, like, yeah. is it good weed? Then just roll it, my nigga. Stop talking to me about it and let's smoke it then. That's fine. <laughs> so, right. like... So that was the easiest of the hard questions. That's my weed question, yeah. So, what's the anime answer? Yeah. Um, well, I'll give you the animes that inspire Floral Swords. So, my... Well, I'll just tell you, period. I guess we'll just bring it back to that. Floral Swords... Um, you know, my legendary science fiction uh, saga, the greatest story that will ever be told of all time, you know, that I made. Uh, but it's better than everyone else's, my bad. Just wanted to make sure you guys knew. No asterisk either. This is all actual 100% facts. No asterisk. <laughs> put that in a, put no asterisk right here, put an asterisk, and then take it away. <laughs> Boop. For the editor. <laughs> so like um wait what oh animes yeah so <laughs> my <laughs> my favorite animes um so the ones that inspired floral swords the most were cowboy bebop oh fire ghost in the shell i can see the cowboy bebop with all the space and like the the, the space connection to like modern things on earth yeah, like yeah, music, I like space a lot. Yeah. I like yeah. the music. Yeah, yeah. yeah because Black Cat Bill, if you when you bump the album, you'll notice there's like some kind of there's some Black Cat Bill like skits on it that mm. you know like it's like a radio host. And yeah, there's actually a radio space host DJ. called Black Cat Bill, Ani Fanji, who gets intergalactic uh, signals and can transmute music from different planets and different places uh, through the waves on Ifanji so that they can hear. Uh, you know different things and in, in the story there's that's how Space DJ? that's how the Afangians, um learn about hip hop mm. because they don't actually make it there on their planet so when they hear it from earth or from across the universe technically if you will they heard dropout kings they heard uh, black cat bill the artist uh, you know or some music like that and then they were bumping it on their planet and being like, oh, this is dope. And now it's inspired them and the are going to make their own version of hip hop. So 
Um, yeah, the music very much plays a role in the story. Cowboy, but I would say Cowboy Bebop, Cowboy Bebop Ghost in the Shell. So uh, shouts to the major. Original Ghost in the Captain Shell, right? Monica, yeah. Not that 3D shit. No, the like, the, like the, like I mean, the, the original. Anime. Like the original, yeah. like. Like the real anime. Like it's 2D and then they should go in Oh, you're talking about Netflix. I mean, no, yeah. man. We way too. Uh, no. Yeah. Man, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, the 80s, 90s. Yeah, like the real major. When they and drew that 90s her. 90s anime hit different. They drew her body bad as shit. Fam. And she was just naked and would just turn invisible and then blow people's and brains just, out. Dude, dude. Save the city. And I was just like, what? And when I was a kid, I was like, what is I used to stay up this? late to watch Ghost in the Show. I was like. Did I just see a purple-haired, bad Japanese thick chick with a tele, with a cloaking device and a futuristic science pistol, like blast down? Like I was like, yo, Super I don't know, but I'm like, here for the rest of however long. This want to keep going. Space is, is definitely a, a foundation. And bro, like the like. philosophical premises and just the notions of theory that they bring up in Ghost in the Shell with that, um, I guess that same idea I brought up earlier, the blending of the line between technology and nature. Mm -hmm. Like, where does nature stop and technology begin? Is is technology just nature because we're nature and that's what we created and therefore is a natural result of who we are? Or is it like a diverse and separate um, path that is almost like a mutilation or a distortion or some type of alteration of nature that um, I guess ultimately causes it to become something else entirely, which may even be uh, antagonistic to nature itself. Uh, I.e. that is to say maybe like some Skynet, Terminator, um, Ultron type of wipe out all the animals and people and restart and make things in the uh, image of machines instead of uh, God, I guess, as the children of God, the machines are the children of man. So it is an interesting concept that I think that, mm. that really tackles and goes to the show that's so underrated. The machines come from God, um, too, if, if God created man and man created well, I mean, machine. we could just be in a simulation right now. We could be in a machine. I, I guess we a, are to I some machine. extent. I'm yeah, machine. that's why I don't, you know, that's why you got to take your risk too machine. and shoot your shots because like you're not even here and you're just a germ anyway. No, so for real. don't be afraid to like make mistakes Shout or out just to try the germs out there, new things because anyone hating on you, like literally they're a germ. Like literally there's billions, there's probably trillions of planets in just the galaxy of the Milky Way. Um, as I've created a universe in a galaxy, I've done a lot of uh, interesting studying about a, a, a lot of different things and I think like blah, blah, blah. space though is just crazy how fast it is right like just the Milky Way galaxy is so incomprehensibly big and the fact that we typically look at it on a flat 2D space and don't realize that a galaxy in itself is like a ball and there are not just planets in a linear um, you know, they're all over the ball. They are above it and beneath it, and and everywhere around it. Because there's no up, down, left, right. It's just open space, and mm. so it's like for every star, there's probably multiple planets around each star, and there's just so much going on out there. And we just, you know, we're just humans down here, and we're <laughs> like, oh, like my test is important. Oh my god, my relationship. Oh no, I gotta, I'm gonna get fired from my job. Like asteroid could just blow this whole bitch up, and like we just be dead. <laughs> like yo, all yo. of human history. Poof, it's Every, gone. Like, yo, y'all was worried about that for what? Like, you're done. <laughs> Shut it down. That's like, crazy. so it's like, nah, bro, don't take life too serious. That's why I have fun to write cartoons and like decide, like, that's what I'm gonna make my living because I just want to do stuff that I enjoy. That you like. That still, you know, encourages people to have fun and be positive. But it's like, hey, man, nothing's that serious. Um, uh, it's it's in God's hands, bro. It's but no, it's above me now. It's above me now. So, so two but, is cool. Top two. Yeah. So you're gonna do three? We can do three. Oh, and then probably like Naruto. Mm. Um, Dragon Ball, Foundation for me, Gundam, um, you know, I'll give those honorable mention. Uh, Naruto, I actually didn't start watching until 2000. I watched the first one right when he was a kid. Like, I seen half of that. Like, I seen the Zabuza one and like a little bit of the... Is Haku a boy or a girl? (laughs) He's a boy. Okay. Um, I'm going to just... Yeah, he's a boy. Why um, does that keep him for, around for real? You know what's really interesting? That's funny. That brings up another thing. <laughs> We're talking about it. So anime, people have kind of often asked, like, why? Uh, I was just looking at some research and people were like, why do a lot of anime male characters look so pretty? Like, why do they make them look almost like women on purpose and draw them with, like, 
very pristine and clean and clear faces. And it's because um, there was this like prince um, back in the day, uh, kind of like on some Alexander the Great type ish, when Europe first uh, colonized like uh, China and Beijing and, and the surrounding areas, um, who was kind of like this, uh, he was just like a very beautiful man, but just kind of like slim and like kind of like fem feminine in his, his body frame, but his face was just like aesthetically, like just blonde hair, blue eyes, kind of like your perfect, like, I don't know, picture of that. And um, when they first conquered, he was like the face of a lot of the, uh, I suppose, the surrounding uh, social infrastructure. And they became, obs and, and, and they, it kind of goes into some other things too, but I suppose what I'm focusing on is the face structure. It yeah. became like a thing that having male figures that are like leader heads who have these like pristine, angelic, almost uh, divine kind of facial feature uh, just represented like kind of, I guess, like the, these different uh, elements of, of people and culture that they wanted to idolize. And so they just mm. started, when they started drawing characters, um, they became more and more Eurocentric uh, in their animes. And that's why you don't like see a lot of black people in anime maybe, or a lot of Hispanic people, but you always think like, why are all these animes like white characters? Um, Sometimes they're not white characters. A lot of times they are Asian. It's just they with fair skin. Just yeah, because Asians are fair skinned too. You know what I'm saying? But we interpret them differently than they interpret themselves. For instance, like Pokemon, Brock has the literal slant eyes. Brock is black, right? And I don't say that because I think his he's eyes just are slanted. South Asian. I, I was like, I would say like South Asian. The reason why I say Brock is black, but, I don't want to get out topic. Because he gets bitches and he be high all the time. That's why his eyes don't well, open. Well, he, ch he definitely chases girls. He's usually getting the Johnny Bravo, but yeah. that's fair. I'm sure he's fine with a few. But what I was he just... He's high for sure. But they, he's always cooking and hungry and but shit. But like his eyes in Attack open. on Titan, there's like Armin. And there's um, a homie that turns into the Beast Titan. And there's a homie that turns into uh, the Armor Titan and this and that. And... Uh, and um, like, bro, there's hella shows. Like, you got Vinland Saga right now, which is literally about your Vinland Saga. I fuck with that um, show. You got, uh, you know, like Gundam, Shar Asnerable, and the, the, like, there's like an obsession with the blonde hair, blue. You got Guts from Berserk, the dude that Guts, the dude that goes against him, the white hair, Berserk is crazy, blue eyes, um, who turns into the demon at the mm. end and ruins his life. But they have this obsession with like. These pretty boy, this like pretty boy thing, and so that's kind of like this uh, Eurocentrism that they kind of so go that's for sometimes, like and they like to incorporate those features and uh, those cultures maybe more so than you think other uh, and other ones are lacking. But again, they do what they want. I just I, that was another reason though that inspired me to want to make my anime and make my story because I was like, cool, black people don't get to be in stuff. If we do, we get to be one character. Yeah. If somebody, if there's a cool Latin character, there's just one of them. Like it's it's never like a you know, like, why can't it just be, a, ugh, why can't they just all be melanated? There's one white dude. Maybe there's no white people. And that's not a stab to say, like, I'm trying to make a show where I don't want white people in it. That's just to say that, like, there's already there should be more infinite amount of shows there should be more where white culture is very deeply explored and represented and expressed. And that's great. So we have a, we have a lot of that. I would like to showcase some other things that I think the world is missing out on or doesn't have enough um, awareness and acknowledgement of that's come from people that look like us and do that in a cool way with superheroes and powers and I mean like assassins and wars and things like that of that nature so but yeah shouts to Naruto shouts to Ghost in the Shell shouts to Cowboy Bebop those are fire shows I've never heard that um, top three from people anymore you know what I'm saying all those other ones I just mentioned too I'm watching right now Demon Slayer Attack on Titan Jujutsu Kaisen House Paradise like these are really Jujutsu Kaisen's new season stampede. drops tomorrow drops tomorrow Oh, we're having an anime Bash freak out right now. Oh, okay, and a, so and ramen. Ramen, ramen toppings. Um, What's your favorite? Real ramen too. Like I'm not saying that Marchand isn't real ramen. I'm talking uh, like miso, like real like spicy miso's fire though. I love miso ramen. That's, what I'm That's saying. probably just spicy miso for real. Um, man, I be every time I go, I try to get something new though. So I don't know if I have a favorite. 
in particular like kind of ramen like I do just kind of generically fuck with like spicy miso stuff but every time I go get ramen now I've been trying to just try different ones but I always love you know any of the shit that got like the pork I need the extra egg man because I love eggs so I love extra the egg in it the, the, uh, the little um hard boiled or cold boiled hard what's the little egg? like like the crab cake jaw in there mm. I like all the uh Obviously, the noodles got to be fire, but, you know, I ain't never really worried about that because that's what they do. Um, yeah, it gives you some real ramen. But you I can try about some us. different. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I just be like, yo, I'd be like asking them, like, yo, put, put, put some shit in here that you, what, what would you put in here? Mm. I'd be trying to see. Uh, so I just love ramen, though. It's not, it's, it's probably in my top, uh, it's in my top 10 favorite foods, maybe in my top five. It's not my absolute number one, but it's it's up there. Like I don't really skip on a chance to eat genuine good ramen. I need to go Usually get some when tomorrow. I get a, when I get an opportunity, I'll I need to get some do real this. ramen. So but um, I, what I will say too, before we even uh, you know we hop off, is that you know besides that I told y'all this is gonna be the greatest talk of legendary science fiction story epilogue blah, blah, odyssey blah, 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 blah. No, sorry, but this is about to be the craziest ever um I gotta break down to y'all that um not only I wanted to just give y'all like a some a little backstory about um what's going on in regards to this album because I dropped another album this year with my band Dropout Kings called Riot Music yeah, Riot music but now that shit. is super fire, too. That's my other baby. So I've had two babies this year. Um, you know, they both my favorite. So don't ask me that. But my Riot music baby and my Floral Swords baby are both Floral Swords babies. They're all part of the same universe. That's fine. Riot music and Glitch Gang literally are. You can tell Glitch Gang, too, by the cover. About the. Uh, yeah, the universe and so we found ways to keep it on the low but that's what i was going to say that was something i was going to say about manipulation uh, that you guys will hear first here uh i actually didn't say it first here but i think it's the first time i said it to the public but it's just i feel like i can tell you guys um so like originally the band was doing its totally own thing right and floor of swords was my own separate thing they weren't interconnected at all. But as I've continued to create the story and wanted the music to be a fundamental part of the representation and the expression of that, I was like, well, it only makes sense to, you know, kind of have a conclusive combination of the two ideas. And so in my head, I was like, I'm not going to come to the band and propose that, you know, they necessarily, we got to write music that's attributing to the cause of benefiting you know the saga that i'm trying to tell yeah. and that whole ordeal but i at the same time was like well it's my band and i write everything i say and in general the majority of the lyrics since i'm doing a lot of the verse work and uh on this last album on riot music i wrote the most of the album um Whereas Adam probably wrote the most of Audio Dope and then Glitch Gang was a little more 50-50. It's dope that you guys but We like to like mix that. it up and change yeah. it up. Uh, but that was to say that, like, yeah, those two, those last two, I got more and more into my bag of being like, cool, these are band songs. And I want it to be, it, one, on one hand, it to continue to be its own thing and Dropout Kings to just be, hey, if you just want to just dope, jam some dope new, you know, new metal, here it is. Like, this some shit you ain't never heard before and ain't nobody gonna do it better than this. No. Um, but then at the same time, I wanted to be like, if, you know, you want something more from this, if, if, if it can, if there's space for you to dive deeper into this, then uh, I'm going to connect it with my story and sneak a bunch of hints and other things in it. If you really are a lyricist, if you really like music that Predictive uh, relates to other things besides just what is on the surface. Mm. Um, so when you like reading between the lines, and enjoying songs that you know you like the replay value that comes from 
hearing uh, things multiple times and being like, oh, I didn't notice this last time or oh, dang, I heard this in a different way this time because of some other piece of information I got from some other artistic medium. Uh, I thought that would be like, you know, kind of again, like that's the whole point of EVS is like to combine different things and market and express stuff in different combinations of ways that you're not typically used to seeing. They're more unique. They're more niche. They're more, uh, you know, what I'm saying uh, just special in that sense so shout out to endless vault studios shouts to endless vault studios shouts to dropout kings go bump riot music bump the emperor's children and know that uh yeah man the story's about to be lit it, um, i'm planning on finishing the book later this year the first book so uh stay tuned for that you know what i'm saying and uh, yeah tap in we got a patreon up on endless vault studios tell them where to find you you know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, you can find us <laughs> on, uh, yeah, I was basically, I got you, I got you, I got you. You could have just got you. find us on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Um, I don't know if we actually have it in this vault studios, TikTok, but we, I'm sure we will at some point, but yeah, we got it in all those. There's not an endless vault studios.com yet, but we do have the domain name. So we're working on the website, um, but there's a floralswords.com. So please check that out. There is an indigo shadow.com. So please check that out. And um, yeah, we on all the other social media, Johns. Uh, we on YouTube. We got a lot of different content, like I said, from music, drawing. Um, we're working on the animation. So the anime and the video game and stuff like that, the, the, those different type of level things that we're working on, those will be, of course, a bit more in the future as we continue to develop the infrastructure of the studio. But yeah, tell even me where to find you. Oh, and a non black cat bill. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes I'm. Uh, <laughs> Salute to the whole family. I'm trying to think about the team. No, we're proud, we're proud of all but, that uh, because, and, and, it's, and it's dope that you have that. But yeah, I want them to know where they can find you too because, uh, you know, that's that's like a breadcrumb trail to everything else. No, yeah, that's real shit. I'm black cat bill. You know, if you follow me, you're going to see more news about all these things inevitably. So definitely please. Um, Follow me on all social medias, you know what I'm saying? Hit me on that, uh, what's that new Twitter? Hit me on that X. I don't really be on that shit, though, man, for real. Uh, I'll be on threads, dog, yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Get me on Facebook, get me <laughs> on Instagram, me on TikTok, man, me on YouTube, man. Uh, Hit me on YouTube, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> comment on the video, send me a message on YouTube. I love, for real. Uh, we out here, yo. Um, so, yeah, definitely tap in. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of amazing art on the way, and uh, I really think you guys are going to love these characters and this storyline and uh, everything that this galaxy and universe has to offer. So just uh, stay tuned and stay ready, y'all, for sure, man. We appreciate you. I'm so glad you were here, bro. And, and honestly, pay attention. Follow all those places. Follow Endless hey, Ball. Follow up. Black Hat Bill. Check follow out Get Dropout Free. Games. Easy Way Get, to Act. Salute to Get Free. Salute to the home. You know what I'm you know saying? What I'm saying? Like, all you got to do to get free is pay attention. Ooh. I can drop gems on y'all night, but we're going to let y'all go. You've been doing it. You know, hey, we appreciate you, man. I'm so glad to have you, bro. Hey, it's likewise, love, bro. Fam, you know what it man. is. Hey, this has been the definition of active. Yes, sir. It's, it's yes, active. Sir. I'm, we have this motherfucker. Good shit, dude.